In this video, we're going to learn how to export our work from InDesign. We want to make sure it's done right so that when you go to the print shop, you get the results you want. And in particular, we want to learn about bleeding and why using the bleed area in your documents is so important for good results when you go to the print shop. So we're going to use this basic blank document here just as an example, first of all, to explain bleeding, how it works and what its purpose is. And then we'll export some actual work from InDesign. So let's start a new document from scratch so you can follow along. File menu, new. And let's change our change our units from picas to inches. And we're just going to create a basic 8.5 by 11 page. And here we can set up the bleed and slug areas. Now, this doesn't have to be done here. You can do it after the fact. But since we're doing it from scratch, let's set it up. Let's set a quarter of an inch bleed. That's what I like to use. There are smaller standards, but uh, nothing wrong with a uh, quarter of an inch bleed area. We won't talk about slug in this video. Say create. Here's our document. Now you notice that you've got the margins, which we've talked about, and the page edge is right here. When we created the bleed area, this additional line appeared outside of our page area and that indicates the bleed area. So let's bring in a graphic here or a background image, file, place, and let's bring in the example BG JPEG. And we're just going to place this in here and we're going to position it and we're going to hold control and shift and fit that to the page. Now this is designed to fit this page exactly. And let's zoom in. Control plus 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 plus. Hold the space bar to navigate over. And you'll see that I have this image positioned exactly at the edge of the page. And that might seem just fine, but the normal practice with any kind of a background image is to bleed it off the edge into the bleed area like this. So there's the actual edge of the paper once this is printed out and we're bleeding it out into the bleed area. And if you're not familiar with this at all, you're probably wondering why. Well, let's explain why. Um, this is normally what you would do, holding control and shift again, and you would bleed it out on all the edges where you want it to appear to print right to the edge of the page. In professional printing situations, printers don't print right to the edge of the paper. They print beyond the edge of the paper with such an image and then it's printed on a larger piece of paper than the final product and the white edges are trimmed off. So let's simulate this. But let's do it wrong. Let's line our product up right to the edge of the page. I'm going to hold control and shift here. And I'm letting go of control and shift just because it's not an exact fit. And there's our background image lined up to the edge of the actual page. And let's do an export. File, Adobe PDF preset, high quality print. We'll just save it as an example. And here we are in the export dialog box. We're going to switch to marks and bleed since we're talking about bleeding. And for the purpose of this example, we're going to turn on all the printer's marks. You generally don't need them all, and it's up to the print shop that you work with to determine what they need. But for now, we'll turn them all on. And we're going to say that we definitely want to use the document bleed settings. You can set them here, but I don't find I have as much good luck here as I do with setting them in the actual project setup and then selecting this checkbox, use document bleed settings and we're going to export. Okay, so that should be exported. We're going to open that up inside Photoshop and have a look at the actual product. So here we are in Photoshop and this is the result of our export from InDesign. Let's zoom in and have a look at some of these printers marks and explain them. Use the space bar, move up here. Okay, so these are the registration marks. They basically just let the printer or the print shop know uh, the exact center of your document, both in the vertical and the horizontal plane. And that's used in some machines so that your um, actual 
uh, project can be lined up accordingly with the uh, mechanical nature of the print machines themselves. These are color bars, just letting your print shop know what colors are used and the range of your grayscale. But most importantly, we have our crop marks and our bleed marks. Now the crop marks are where the printer would cut the white edges off of the larger stock that they're printing your work on to get rid of the white areas and leave you with the final result at the dimensions you want it. It could be 8.5 by 11, it could be 4 by 6 card, it could be whatever you want the final product to be. These crop lines, these crop markers, are what you have to include so that the printer knows exactly where to cut the stock so that your final product is the right size. Now, if you, as we have done here, if you have not bleed or bled your photos and background images outside into this bleed area, then some problems can occur. Let's simulate that. We're going to use the crop tool and we're going to use this crop tool and we're going to use the, the actual crop lines as markers to set up our crop. And this would sort of simulate exactly what would be happening in the print shop. So let's line that up there with that print marker there. And let's line up the top with this marker. And we're lining up down here as well. This is sort of simulating where the machine and the person would actually cut your product using these crop lines as guides. Okay, let's crop that. Crop. All right, let's see how it looks here. Not bad. The top, let's see, did the top work? Yes, good, it did. Okay, so what's happened right here? What you can see is that we weren't quite perfect enough. We weren't exact enough in the cutting of our final product. And the result is that a tiny bit of white, a little tiny edge of white stock leftover paper is still showing on the edge. If we had bled this image out into the bleed area and such a slight little tiny mistake was made in the print shop, it wouldn't matter that much because there would be additional extra image to cover over those little tiny minuscule errors and a printer is a machine pulling paper through mechanically and printing each one it's easy for a piece of paper to just be slightly out of alignment with the printer heads or the machine and you get little white lines like this on the edge so what would happen if we did the same thing but we bled it if we bled it out into the bleed area then any object or decorative element or background image that we wanted to smoothly go right to the edge of our final product, right off the edge, then it would look like that. When it was cut like this, this little white line wouldn't even matter. This error wouldn't matter at all. So let's go back to our original document that we were working on in this beginner course that we've been, we've been doing and export our final product and see how the results turn out if we apply this approach. Okay, here we are back in InDesign, and this is the project we've been working on so far in our beginner course. So if we're going to export this correctly, we uh, want to make sure that we include the bleed area when we export so that we don't get that little white edge if there's a little tiny variation in the printing process. We want to get the look of smooth printing right to the edge with any element that is meant to touch the edge of the page. In this case, some of the parts of Bruce's photo here go right to the edge of the page and this red decorative element goes to the edge as well as this little blue line goes right to the edge. So we want that to look smooth and go right to the edge. We don't want any little mistakes to result in those tiny little white edges that we saw in the example we just looked at. So let's export this correctly and see how it looks when we export it. First let's press the W key because we've been using the W key to look in this preview mode and press the W key and then we'll get to see all of our elements and all of their bounding boxes again. So you can see that we've extended this 
little decorative element, and the background photo of Bruce Lee is extended right past the edge of the page. There's the edge of our page, and there's content. Both the photo and this red element are extending into the bleed area. Okay, let's export it. Let's go to the File menu and choose Document Setup. Now when we first started the course we didn't include any kind of a bleed area and that's okay. You don't have to set up the bleed area at the beginning. Just remember to always extend any of your images as you're designing out into the bleed area beyond the edge of the page. And then before you export you can choose the size of your bleed area. Let's choose 0.25 or a quarter of an inch for a bleed area. We're not going to include the slug at all, and we're not going to discuss the slug in any great degree in this intro course. Let's say OK. And you can see that you've now got this additional line here, and that line is indicating the bleed area. Let's export, file, and instead of just choosing export, we're going to go right to Adobe PDF preset and choose high quality print. These presets are helpful because they do a lot of some of the finer settings for you. And it's a great way to be sure you're setting this up correctly for high quality printing. We'll just call it project two. That's fine. And here we have to do our marks and bleeds again. We did this in our example that we just did. So switch to marks and bleeds. Let's include all of our printer's marks again, because we are learning about them, so we might as well include them. And this is the most important box. Include your bleed and slug. Use the document bleed settings. You do not need to include this slug area for most printing situations. And with marks turned on and use document bleed settings, choose export. It's going to warn you that there's overset information. That's okay and we've exported it. Let's open that document up and have a look at the results. All right, so here we are. We've just opened up the PDF that we've exported from InDesign and we're just gonna look at it inside Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader. All right, so we have to set this up first so we can have a good look at it. Go to the View menu if you're using Adobe Acrobat Reader or Adobe Acrobat Pro and under Page Display, choose the two-page view and also make sure you turn on show the cover page in two page view. So make sure that you've chosen page display. Turn this on show cover page in two page view and select two page view. So this is our blank cover page. We didn't put anything on that. But if we scroll down to the next page, this is our result. We'll zoom out a little bit. Control minus. All right. So let's have a look at this. So we've got all of our printer's marks. And look at that. We've got bleed happening out beyond our crop marks. So that's good. If we now were to get the print shop to cut this final result according to these crop lines, we would get smooth printing right off the edge of the page. Isn't that great? Now something to notice is that we do have marks in the middle. And this is fine if each one of your pages is printed separately and you use what's called a glue bind or some kind of coil binding to join all of your individual pages into some kind of a book or magazine. But if you're going to do what's called a saddle stitch or simply fold the pages over and staple them in the middle, these marks are not going to be what you want to do. If you want to print this page out and see it as two pages without this gap in the middle, you can see there's crop marks here, there's a gap between this this element here which is supposed to be together and if you could did have an image that went right across the page you could easily see this gap here as well so this isn't quite right in some cases this is a slight change in your export so let's do it again we're gonna shut this down go back into our InDesign product and let's export it one more time and learn something else file Adobe PDF preset high quality print We'll just replace it, Project 2 we're calling it. Yes, we're going to replace it. Go through the same process, marks and bleeds. Yes, we want all our printer's marks. And remember, your printer or the print shop may not need all these. Just ask them what they need. Make sure you include the bleed and slug area. We're not necessarily turning this on, but we are including our bleed area. 
the, what's included in the document, remember. And go back to General. And here we have an option for how the pages are exported. Pages or spreads. If we switch to spreads, this should fix our little problem. Let's have a look. Let's export it again. That's fine. And let's jump back over and look at that document. We'll do the same thing. Confirm under view menu that under page display we're going to go to page view and make sure you say show cover page in two page view. Let's scroll down and have a look. Okay, as you can see, this looks much better. So this is our two pages that are facing pages exported as spreads. Let's zoom in and have a look. This looks great. So we've got registration mark in the center of the page and our crop marks will allow us to trim off this bleed area and get smooth printing to the edge. Well, let's put this in Photoshop, simulate that same cropping uh, act of cutting the white paper off and we'll see that we're, we've definitely got this figured out. Let's jump over to Photoshop. Okay, here we are in Photoshop and let's simulate that cropping, the cutting off of the bleed area and the white edges so that we can see our result and that the uh, bleeding of the images out into the bleed area allows us to have uh, worry-free printing with no little white edges or mistakes. All right, let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's use the crop tool to simulate this. And remember that these are the bleed marks, but these are the crop marks. So let's use the crop tool. We're going to simulate this by lining this up. And I'm zooming in so I can be accurate, but remember that real accuracy shouldn't be that important because we're simulating slight variations in the paper moving through the machine and not having to worry about it because our background images and elements that go off the page are bled so this shouldn't matter I don't need to worry about it being exact when it comes down to minuscule little variations so that's that corner let's move over here bring this in line this up with that crop mark and that crop mark go down here line this up these two crop marks perfect all right, looking good. Excellent. Okay, so let's do the crop. You can see that this looks like it's pretty much lined up to the crop marks. And crop. All right, let's zoom out and have a look. Here we go. So that's really why you bleed your images out into that area. And that's how professional printing is usually done to achieve that print right off the edge result with no white margins. So that's the basics of exporting for print in InDesign. In the last video, I want to talk about booklet printing.